Welcome to Rockwell's Connected Enterprise. I'm going to spend a few minutes kind of giving you our version of what it takes to compete today in the global industrial environment. And I'm going to start by talking a little bit about what pressures we face today as manufacturers. Today, we expect over another billion consumers to enter the consumer market, largely through emerging markets, by the year 2020. That's only a few short years from now. When I look at that and I look at the challenge that it takes to serve those additional consumers, I look at the consumption of steel for automobiles, I look at the consumption of energy, I look at the consumption of water as serious challenges to our environment and our natural resources. Most industrial companies today are really focused on how to maximize their return on investment as they deploy those resources to serve those consumers. Our estimation is that there's over a trillion dollars of investment required on a yearly basis to make those resources competitive for those companies and to serve those consumers. As I look at manufacturing in general, I look at over a $3.8 trillion value opportunity. Cisco has done some work on estimating these values as the potential for manufacturing to return value to their customers whether through innovation, through revenue activities, or productivity enhancements, there's a significant amount of money at stake through the value of the connected enterprise in linking the hidden amplifier of asset information tied up in manufacturing facilities and opening that information up to higher levels of business value driven through an integrated control and information architecture that we provide as Rockwell Automation with our partners. We call this the connected enterprise. We look at this as an advancement of the smart manufacturing uh, initiatives that are involved in different countries. We participate in the Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition based in the United States, as well as Industry 4.0 based in Europe. All of these advancements and all of these associations are geared up to provide higher levels of competitiveness for manufacturers. We do this by linking the connectivity inherent within the assets of the plant, connecting those assets together, driving information out of them, and making them more efficient and competitive over time. However, today, if you look at the United States, only 14% of manufacturers today in the US alone tie their manufacturing assets together. So you have islands of automation that exist within the factory, all of them are automated, and yet not too many of them are connected. So that handicaps these manufacturers in terms of being able to get useful information out of their machinery and be able to drive higher levels of efficiency and productivity out of them. Ultimately, that's profitability, and ultimately, that's wasted resources. So how do we attempt to drive a connected enterprise to help these companies move forward and get that, uh, that value unlocked? The way we kind of look at it is many of these companies have cultural divides that separate their operations technology workforce from their information technology workforce. What's happened over the last few years is a confluence of technologies that you may have heard of called the Internet of Things. Some call it the Industrial Internet. No matter how you look at it, Internet technology based on standard Ethernet protocols have become the de facto standard whether it's in the office environment and the carpeted areas or whether it's in the plant floor environment. Rockwell's been for 10 years now deploying Ethernet directly on the plant floor, tying assets together for our customers. Now we have the ability to tie that closer together with the information layer that sits in the business area. So when we talk about that, we tend to look at the ERP systems that deal with um, inventory planning, logistics and supply chain management, and tying that with the real-time data that takes care of the safety functions, the production functions, and the machinery capabilities at the lowest levels of the plant. When we tie all those together, we bring that convergence of those disciplines together. It also requires that there's some organizational working together that has to occur, and we tend to be one of the people that kind of glue those two organizations together as we work through that. So this convergence of IT and OT is very critical. It's one concept you have to keep in mind that facilitates the connected enterprise to drive higher levels of value. Now there's also some other enablers that occur here as a result of the advancements of Internet of Things. And when you hear Internet of Things, you think about smarter devices. 
there's going to be a proliferation of over 55 billion devices on the internet. A lot of talking things, transmitting a lot of data about a lot of things that surround them. And as those things proliferate, they need to be aggregated, filtered, and the data needs to be collected and reconciled so that it has context. And our ability to do that within the factory environment gives us the ability to take those smart things, deploy them on more assets, like equipment within your plant or equipment out in a field somewhere, tie that information together and bring it to an integrated control and information environment. So that control and information platform that we deploy is highly critical to being able to take those smart assets, take the information available from them, and make it contextualized and meaningful to the management team responsible for production. All of that is based on its connection to a secure Ethernet-based infrastructure. That secure Ethernet-based infrastructure has been the backbone of everything we've done for the last 10 years and what we've commended our, our uh, customers to do for the last 10 years in order to drive that ITOT convergence closer together. We believe in open standards as well so that we share all of this technology amongst our peers in order to drive higher levels of connectivity for everybody. Now at the same time, that applies to wireless technology as well. So as that common Ethernet has deployed, we've also moved it to wireless and enabled the mobile transaction to occur. So as more and more companies allow bring your own device policies within their, their organizations, we can move the information from the factory or to the remote operation to a remote control station or to a cell phone or to an iPad that an operator walks around the plant with. It's pretty common now for companies to adopt mobile technologies, common commercial technologies, within industrial facilities. It's expected that the, the operator of the machinery is mobile, that the maintenance person for that machinery is mobile. It's expected that the information provided to that mobile worker is just what he needs and it's just in time for what he needs to know. And when it's time to go fix the machine, that he's equipped to know what to bring with him when it's time to go. That minimizes the cost of disruption to the customer overall, and it improves the uptime of the assets over time. And finally, we enable a lot of that by the deployment of emerging cloud technology. As more and more people are moving information processing to the cloud, we take advantage of those compute cycles by allowing our technology to interface with cloud technology to aggregate data away from the plant, potentially within the plant, but sometimes away from the plant into the public cloud, private cloud, semi-private cloud, whatever the case may be, in order to provide the right level of security and protection and privacy for the customer's data, while at the same time providing increased capacity to do the compute cycles required for the analytics that gives you the real-time data and the effectiveness of transaction processing that you need in order to extrapolate higher levels of business value. So when we talk about some of these dynamics and technology, we talk about how we put them to use. We talk about data analytics as being a frontier where we have an opportunity now to accumulate more and more information off running machinery, be able to do more line management in real time, and be able to analyze production qualities as well as uh, maintenance qualities of the machinery in real time as we go. Secondarily, we look at cloud and virtualization as a way for customers to minimize their capital outlays and move to more of an OPEX-based subscription model to get more compute cycles available to them and to mitigate downtime and disaster recovery issues while at the same time lowering their overall cost of capital to stay competitive. And then finally, the mobile worker is here to stay. The ability to put our information front and center on a mobile device for the mobile worker, be able to, to work between operator, maintenance, and management is critical these days. And it's one of the areas that we see as critical to the connected enterprise's success. But first and foremost, you have to believe in an integrated control and information platform to begin with. So our integrated control and information portfolio encompasses an integrated architecture based on control and visualization systems, an integrated power control and motor control system that links that together seamlessly, as well as the services and solutions that bring it all together and allows you to visualize 
and accumulate different sources of data into a common dashboard, as well as manage the production variables that are really serious in terms of giving you higher levels of production quality, flexibility, and sustainability. So the integrated control and information platform provided by Rockwell also helps us integrate with Cisco's information technology infrastructure on Ethernet, as well as provide higher level integration into ERP systems as well. Tying your supply chain all the way down to your demand chain and smart devices that proliferate on your plant floor. The impact of doing this is really what matters. It's a time to market advantage for those that do. As I showed you earlier, 14% of our manufacturers in the United States have not done this or have done this. That means 86% have not. There's a competitive advantage for those that have done it in time to market, in asset utilization, which includes asset efficiency, production efficiency, inventory management, you name it. It also impacts their risk management. So from an enterprise risk management point of view, when we talk about connected enterprise, we talk about a very secure network infrastructure supported by our control and information portfolios that are geared towards improving your security and privacy of your data, while at the same time improving the speed of response to that information so that it's put in context appropriately for those that need it. Lastly, I'd look at total cost of ownership. By unlocking the information that's already resident within your assets, you have the ability to drop your overall lower cost, whether it's as a machine supplier, design, developing, or de delivering uh, equipment to your end users, or if you're an end user, the ability to optimize your plant overall. It comes down to being able to do that at the lowest possible cost with the less, least possible risk. So the Connected Enterprise allows you to do that through an integrated control and information portfolio that's geared to take advantage of new technology while keeping you safe. When we talk about the Connected Enterprise, we talk about connecting smart assets within smart plants, connecting smart plants within the enterprise. So it may be that we're walking, uh, we're, we're deploying this to Connected Enterprise across multiple oil fields, mining installations, or what have you, based on the ability to put remote monitoring in place, have a remote expert diagnosing equipment, monitoring performance, and optimizing the process, or within the plant, monitoring the production of a line, a machine, or several lines and machines to provide optimum scheduling, optimum quality, optimum yield, and at the same time, making sure that the workforce is productive as possible and nobody's wasting time, nobody's wasting resources, nobody's producing scrap. Whether you're in a remote installation or a highly dispersed organization where you're monitoring your fleet, or whether you're within the plant monitoring the assets within the plant, the connected enterprise adds value either way. This doesn't come without challenges, of course. As people try to deploy the connected enterprise, they find that they have organizational challenges. Linking OT and IT together sometimes is a cultural divide that's tough to cross. It's pretty typical that as we go into these engagements, we find ourselves with IT and OT people at the same table trying to come to common ground. And we can get you there. At the same time, there's other challenges that abound. The first and foremost is security. Security and privacy of the data. How do I ensure that I have the right security policies in place? How do I know that I have common network standards and data standards that work together? These are the kind of things that we reconcile as we come to the table to work on a connected enterprise endeavor together. And make no mistake about this, this is not an event, this is a journey. It's a journey that could take years, and it's gonna take commitment. But the payoff is there. We've seen it in our own organization. We've been able to drive four to 5% productivity per year while improving our customer response metrics dramatically. And we'll be happy to discuss that with you at any given time as we go through our Rockwell journey and take you through yours. The Connected Enterprise journey starts with people, process, and technology. As we look at our journey, it started with assessing our global manufacturing footprint, understanding where we could find local expertise to supplement our core expertise, and eventually it comes down to where can I deploy the appropriate people to do the work that has to be done, and how do I have to supplement that with the process that supports it globally? How do I standardize the process appropriately how do I control it globally? And then how do I make sure that there's a global core of experts on hand monitoring what's going on in those plants using the technology available? 
So with today's technology, with the emergence of Internet of Things technologies that we deploy in the connected enterprise, we do this today at our own plants. We do this for other customers as well. So we can deploy both the people, the process, and the technology knowledge that we've gained from our own experience towards yours. And as a result, we have an execution model that allows us to take you through the process of connecting your enterprise, starting with the assessment, working through an integrated uh, control and information infrastructure evaluation and upgrade, on into understanding where the working data capital is that you need to be successful, and then working that data capital around the analytics required to provide you the benefit that you need that ultimately leads to an optimized enterprise and a collaborative supply chain. We've been through this before and we can take you through this as well. Ultimately, the connected enterprise provides you lower risk, lower cost of ownership, higher asset utilization, and faster time to market, making you more globally competitive and productive at the same time. So I have to ask you now, are you ready to go on that journey with us? Thank you.